Hello, welcome to the truth. Now obviously the election is almost upon us and David Cameron said some stuff about me that I don't like, so we're gonna use this as an opportunity to have personal digs at him. Here is some truths. Are you not a little jealous as you're reaching out to voters in this live and unplugged way that you appear not to have been granted an audience with Russell Brand, as Ed Miliband has? He laughed too much there, didn't he? We all saw that. As Ed Miliband has. We back business, says uh, David Cameron, creating jobs and opportunities. Well, you know, some brutal reality. 700,000 people on zero hour contracts, three times as many as in 2010. Most of the jobs that they create are part-time jobs, people that can be pushed around and exploited. Poverty in the UK is in actual fact at a 30 year high. And last year, 900,000 people used food banks. Here in Britain, food banks. Don't you remember when we was kids? That was saying like, Harvest Festival and that, like, or sending things off to Blue Peter and Oxfam. It was like a thing for other countries. Now, it's this one that we're actually in. You know that thing that used to be for charity in foreign lands affected by earthquakes? Mm, yeah, earthquakes, terrible things, unimaginable things. Yeah, well now that's happening in like Guildford. <laughs> and will, I would you, say we're on will the... you be seeking his endorsement or will you leave it to Ed Miliband to go after an endorsement from Britain's uh, stand-up First mark? of all, I mean you know the majority, look at these normal blokes. Can you imagine what they actually think about David Cameron? We are in year five of passionate prime minister. Was he meant to be? He's a passionate prime minister. This job has been uh, unbelievably fulfilling. You know like sort of a picture tells a, a thousand words and all that? Does he look happy about David Cameron being there? He's not even the Prime Minister's there. He can't even be asked to watch. For all his talk of being a passionate Prime Minister, he can't hold the attention of people in a two yard radius of his mad, shiny, painted egg face. Now, as for um, Russell Brand, I, I think I, I profoundly disagree. He says don't vote. That's his whole view. Don't vote. It's a, you know, it only encourages them or something. I mean, look, he's, it's funny, right? It's funny, but you know. Even David Cameron do one of my jokes, what I got off Billy Connolly, gets a laugh third hand. Let me try some of his policies, see if I can make you laugh. They gave 13,000 millionaires a tax cut worth an average hundred grand. Are you laughing? On average, people, like these people in the old factory, forced to stay there like a wet break. Wet break! Wet break! You've got to stay and listen to David Cameron. They're 1,600 quid a year worse off. Ordinary people, in fact, now earn less, while the richest 1% in the UK have seen a 112% increase in their wealth. <laughs> Politics and life and elections and jobs and the economy, it's not a joke. Russell Brown's a joke. Right? Ed Miliband, hang out with Russell Brand, he's a joke. David Cameron, I think he's on the brink of obsolescence. I think come May 8th, he's going to have a lot of time to work on his comedy routines. He's going to have a lot of time freed up. But of course we know that what will actually happen is David Cameron will go and get a job at some top firm, the sort of things you've always done. Within a year you'll be reading, David Cameron is a consultant at this posh thing now. And you go, eh, I thought so. This is not funny. This is about the election. This is about our future. This is about jobs. It's about the economy. It's about the recovery. I haven't got time to hang out with Russell Brand. This is more important. These are real people. Here are some other real people that David Cameron likes to hang out with. Katie Hopkins, Rebecca Brooks, and the Bullingdon boys. David Cameron there, your Prime Minister, with some real people. These are, this is what this election is all about. Now, on the taking demand out of the economy, I tell you the real threat to the recovery. After David Cameron's brilliant early foray into the medium of stand-up comedy, I'm starting to think everything he says is pretty funny. The real threat is saying the deficit doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people call this austerity. I call it living within our means. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't live within your means, you end up broke. <laughs> that is what other countries have opted for. Oh, look at their bored faces. Look at him. He looks like he's at a funeral. Look at this guy, angry. Look at him. He strolled off. Doing it. Well, I tell you, it is your children and my children growing up in a country with overburdened debts, massive debt interest. At the risk of boring you, the national debt is still rising after five years of coalition, standing at 1.4 trillion. They said they were going to clear the deficit, they haven't done. Osborne has borrowed more money in three years than Labour did in 13, and it's overspent by 200 billion. You can't even listen to him, and he's not funny. Get that debt interest bill down and spend the money on here Britain, hospitals, schools. Oh, come on, mate. You 
can't seriously be pretending that you're investing in schools and hospitals, not after PFI, not after your plans to slash the NHS by a further 19%. It's absolutely bloody ridiculous. You've carved it up. Not the amount of politicians in your party that have uh, uh, financial and economic interests in the NHS being carved up. So it's just sort of mad. What we're looking at here is sort of like a sort of weird play in Enfield. Don't believe the politicians who say the deficit doesn't matter. They only say that because they haven't got the guts and the gumption to deal with it. Well, there you go, a man really in tune with the people, so much so that he uses the word gumption in conversation in a sort of factory in Enfield. You've seen David Cameron, he's not funny, he's not joking, but what I think he's promising is that he's become his own tribute act, and hopefully this is something that we don't have to look at anymore. It'd be a relief just to not have to look at the geezers, to tell you the truth. True news, subscribe here. a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trues is like the news. If the news was true, I want some trues. Let's have some trues.